Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, get this. Dina, girl, what's happening? Hey, if you have not gotten this book, I'm upset with you. I'm just upset with you. Okay. What's up, Keish? Get this book. It is free. The Forbidden Secrets of the Goodie Box, which your father didn't tell you and your mother didn't know. It would bless you. Uh huh. Go to my website, ChristopherReed.org. Okay. Get the Kindle or get the PDF. It doesn't matter. Now, if you're like me, I, I like those PDF readers because I hate to read. You know what I mean? Not that I'm slow. It, I'm a slow reader. But, you know, get that and it'll bless you. What's up, Mimi? Um, so, yes, go to my website, download. If you have any problems, just let me know. It doesn't matter. All right. Oh, also, follow me on Twitter because then that's how you can get the notifications. You understand what I'm saying? That I'm out here. So, at the doc read. And I think you can also follow me on Periscope with that. And then... Uh, YouTube. I got all my videos out there. So a hundred of them. So, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. I can't join. Now that's funny. Yeah, that's funny. So listen, we're going to start the year. All right. Um, we, we're going to stop this foolishness of self-hatred. Okay. We're going to start loving on ourselves. Okay. And we're going to make God happy. All right. So that's what we're going to do this year. And this is going to be the year of love. Mm -hmm. 2001 and seven. You understand what I'm saying? Um, so with that being said, there's been a lot of wrong programming out here. You, you, you said that sounds great. Great. There's been a lot of wrong programming. So we got to reverse some things. All right. Mm -hmm. What's up, Dina? So we got to reverse some things because it's a lot of bondage. It's a lot of bondage. You know, Satan is busy. OK, he wants to keep you stuck where you are, but we're not going to let him. OK, we got to reprogram. You, you understand what I'm saying? So with this bad programming, OK, many of us have allowed ourselves to be controlled by other folk and their opinions and what they think really that don't mean a whole a whole a whole hill of beans. But at the same time, we allow these things to determine if we do this and we or we do that. So it's kind of a part of what I call the should family. Mm -hmm. See, you may be Deborah should or you may be Marjorie should or Mary should. What does that mean, Reverend? That means that you have a lot of should messages. OK, meaning uh, you should do this uh, or maybe you should do that. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm talking like this, but it feels good. So I'm going to go with it. Mm -hmm. Y'all just bear with me. Uh, I'm a character. So, you know, you never know who's going to be out here. I'm Doc, but. It, it, I channel that thing. I grew up an only child. So, you you know, it is what it is. Um, so anyway, this is how you live your life. OK, but you don't just show up there. It, 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 yeah, I'm animated. I, you know, I, I, I'm doing a lot. OK, so you don't just show up there. This is something that's put on you. You don't come in the world with this programming. OK. Oh, and let me tell you this. Should have some cousins, okay? It's got uh, I have to, mm -hmm, that's one of the cousins. Uh, I must, okay, all right. So, uh, give you an example. Um, I have to be perfect. Well, who told you that? Where, where did you get that from? Or uh, I must come last. I, I, I must allow everybody else to come before me. I must put their needs before mine, okay? That's one of the cousins. Oh, oh, here's another one. I can't. Oh, then that, that, that's a good one. OK, um, I can't do really what I want to do because somebody I told me I couldn't. OK, so I, I'm, I'm strict. So these are the messages that govern our lives as we go about our everyday activities. Now, where does this come from? Now, I'm glad you asked me that. I'm glad you asked. Rep. This comes from now one of the main sources or our parents. Mm, yeah, I know you wanted to know, Diamond. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes from our parents. Now, you know, both of them or just mom, just dad, it doesn't matter, you know, but they told you that uh, you shouldn't do that. OK, or you, you must do this. Now, a lot of them meant well. OK, they didn't really just necessarily want to mess you up because the thing is, somebody screwed them up. OK, so these are should messages that they got from, you know, whoever was in their life. So, of course, they're going to bless you with all of this foolishness. All right. So who says you can't? Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who says you can't? Oh, there she is. There she is. OK. Tried and true in here. And so the other place that these should and I can't and I must and I um, uh, what I say, I can't. I, I have two messages come from is um, other authority figures. You know, it could be other family members. It could be teachers. You know, they good for, uh, you know, programming us wrong. Sometimes they, they mean well, but sometimes they crazy. Oh, here's a good one. Church. 
Now, I'm not trying to step on nobody's toes. I, you know, I, I, I don't, I'm not trying to start no fights. And I'm not saying that everybody there is wrong. I'm not saying that. But sometimes some of y'all get programmed with some foolishness and some stuff from somebody who's in the pulpit that, that they ain't got the sense that God gave a gnat. You understand what I'm saying? And they telling you what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and they crazy. Yeah, yeah, they 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 crazy. Um, they're not really sanctioned. See, scripture says, study yourself, you know, to show yourself approved. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so I understand it. You, you know, as a child though, you you don't have the the, the the ability to discern between should I be or should I not? My parents take me and there's a lot of bondage. Oh, come on, somebody. There's a lot of religious bondage. All right. Surrounding this thing. So we're going to get into that a little bit more as we proceed. So we th these should messages, it causes us to seek the approval and the validation of others. OK, that's one of the things it does. So what you want. Mm hmm. Shackles on my. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. You just never know where I'm going to go with it. Um, so you never get to do what you want. Mm hmm. What you want doesn't matter. That doesn't even come into the equation. Who cares what you want? Because you should do this. And see, we play these. My, but see, after we long gone out of our parents house. Oh, we've been long gone. We, we in our 30s and we 40s. But we can still hear it. Mm -hmm. We can still hear mama say, well, I wouldn't do that if I was you. Mm -hmm. you, you. You shouldn't do that. And so you still governing your, your affairs by what she says or, you know, or what your dad says. You reading the paper. Mm -hmm. No, no, you have to, you know, so you, you can still hear that. You still want to be yet obedient because, see, a lot of you want to be right. You want to be on the side of right. You don't want to be wrong. You don't want to be caught out here and God forbid church. Oh, somebody's. Uh, see, God, you know, God forbid church told you to do it. So you, 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 you're struggling. Well, I, I want to be uh, obedient to God uh, and, and I want to do what's pleasing in his sight. And, and, and so they told me I should do this and do that. But we're going to get into that a little bit more. So as it pertains to certain things like careers. OK, um, now you pick the career. That somebody told you you should go into. That ain't what you like. That don't, that don't, that's not what rings your bell. That's not what you're passionate about. But they told you, listen, you should do that because maybe it's a certain amount of money. Maybe it's a certain level of prestige. Or maybe they just control freaks. And they just took, well, your mother said, mm, I don't know. But I just seen to me you should do something that's make sure that you, you know. And you said, well, you know, okay, whatever, mom. But you've been miserable. You've been miserable, okay? And some of y'all relationships. Now, you didn't fool around and you didn't got hooked up with somebody that you really didn't much care for. Not that they wasn't nice, okay? Maybe they had all the trimmings, you know, of, of what folks thought you should be with because, you know, you listen to maybe some of the folk in the church and whatnot. Um, but the guy that you really enjoyed. You know, he might not have been a uh, he might not have been a prophet. He might not have been an uh, apostle. He might not have been a pastor and, you know, and had all the alphabet soup letters behind his name. You understand? But he was a good man in the love of God. But you, you said, well, he wasn't this such a much. So you went with such a much. And now you're on your second divorce. You understand what I'm saying? So folk can get you caught up. All right. Because they're going to tell you what they think you should be doing. And you want to be obedient, uh, obedient and right before God. And, you know, and it gets you into some situations that um, have you out here. Some of them church folks be in bad marriages and want. Yeah, yeah, they definitely want you to join. Now, see, sometimes now after your, your your parents and these various authority figures, yeah, your second divorce, some third. Mm -hmm. and see, after these authority figures that you listen to as you were growing up, after they may be out the picture to some degree, or that their influences has moved on. See, other folks will pick that up. So then your friends may pick it up. OK, because, you know, you're going to tend to gravitate towards folk who are going to, you know, speak these things into your life because it's, it's a pattern. You know, we're talking generational type curses here. So you're going to gravitate to that. So some of your friends will say, if I was you, I wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. It's if you should be or it, maybe it's a guy. See, because they're going to put their stuff on you. Yeah, it, it's patterns. You understand? I wish I had a different sweater on. I could point that out. But it's 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 pattern. So your friends fears. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Your, your friends fears and limitations and they messed up thinking, you know, when it comes to a guy, well, girl, you should date him. Oh, my God. You know, uh, hey, I went kidding about the fact that he ain't called you back. You, he's a good man. Girl, you better go. listen. Let him know. He might not know that you interest him. So now they got you chasing after folk. Uh-huh. Because they thinking they telling you what they what you should do. 
okay, what they would do, or you have to, and you just out here, you know, you, you, you're not trying to make no enemies, you know, you're just trying to get along the best way you could, or for some of you, you know who else will take the role of what you should do and have you led around by, you know, your kids, mm -hmm. your kids. Now, I don't know, a lot of y'all have different type of backgrounds. See, cultures come into play with this. See, you got some folk from the motherland. You got some folk from Africa. Very strong dominant culture, you know, of, as, when it comes to uh, the family having some say so in your life. You know, I've talked to plenty of folk that says that, Doc, you just don't understand that um, I, I feel a lot of guilt, you know, as a mom, if I don't do certain things for my kids. Now, maybe they they, they grown and they should be doing some things for themselves, but they, they, they're kind of like misfits. Um, um, not saying that they're horrible kids, but they're still trying to find their way. And so you get out there and you're trying to help and you're trying to overdo stuff. Uh, and your mama and them making you feel like you a bad mom because you won't enable them. You know, so I'm just saying the should messages, they're all over the place. You have to and you must and all of this kind of stuff. And you get caught up in this foolishness. And before you know it, you, you're, not, you're not even aware that you're not controlling your life anymore. OK, why? Because you really never have control to begin with. Because like I said, nobody ever stopped to ask you what you want. It really didn't matter. Yeah. Um, enabling grown kids. Those messages come from the most miserable folk. Yes, they do. But. Like I said in the beginning, when you have already been indoctrinated with wrong programming, a child doesn't know. When you come into the world, you, you, you just come. You're open. You, you are so open. So everything that comes into you is programmed into you. And then you accept. There, there, there's, we're wired to look at our parents as our source for identity and what's right and wrong in the world. And when they screwed up, well, what do you think is going to happen? I found to be all up in your minute. And, mm -hmm. and so what we want to talk about now is the fruits of I should and I can't and I have to and I must. OK, because it has little children. Mm -hmm. It has little children and you can recognize. Them. Now, one of the fruits is worry. Now, when we talk about worry, some of y'all are so scary. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, you're scary actor. Um, you're always thinking about the worst case scenario. Okay. Because for a lot of you, you was programmed, you know, I, I know folks like their mother was so overbearing and she, you, you was told you can't do this or you, you can't do that. And they put so much fear on you. You don't even want to drive down the street too far by yourself. Okay. And everything for you is just being in this little limited box. With the shoes and the, you know, you have to and I must. So what do you think is going to happen when you get into a relationship? So what I was saying is some of y'all just so ate up with worry. And that's and that comes into your other relationships and, you know, everything that you do because you've been programmed wrong with all of these messages about what you should be doing. And it's got you so messed up. OK. All right. So messed up that it, it spills over into everything. We must really need this. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. The devil's busy and he doesn't want you to have it. That's OK, because I'm going to give it to you. So we just put them all three together and you just watch them back to back. That's all right. Um, maybe it is bad weather. We've had some snow here, so that could be a problem. Another thing is self-criticism. Mm -hmm. He's a lie now. Self-criticism. A lot of y'all big with judging yourselves. Mm -hmm. A lot of you are women. Oh, my God. Now, y'all big on this. This, this self-criticism, y'all beat up on yourself some awful. I should do this. You dummy. You should have done that. Or I'm not this enough. Or I'm not that enough. You know, uh, and, and so the messages that you give yourself. Now, a lot of times these messages, okay, you got to understand. You're just repeating what you heard somebody say to you. So if you just search and you look on back there in your past, okay, in your childhood, it was probably somebody, some authoritative figure, maybe mom and daddy or somebody else that was telling you that you wasn't nothing. That was continually sending you the message about why you was not good enough. So what you did is you picked up the baton and you started to criticize yourself. You said, well, they gone. That's fine. So now you call yourself stupid and now you call yourself lazy and now you beat up on yourself constantly. 
Okay. Now this is a little bit different between from uh, the perfectionists because we don't get into that too, but that's a whole nother different ministry. This is just being constantly putting yourself down. Okay. So who do you think that you're going to hook up with in a relationship? Yes. You're going to hook up with, you got to, you, if, if you are possessed with this critical demon, you have to hook up with somebody that's going to treat you like crap. Yes, you you have to. It's 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 the code, okay? It's it's the law that you in the agreement that you made with yourself. Some of you have you ever read the book The Four Agreements? Wonderful book. If you haven't read it, check it out. It's a good read. Um, but you have this agreement that you've made with yourself, okay? That thou shall always be put down, okay? So of course you're going to hook up with somebody. There's going to, oh, yeah, maybe they seem like they're wonderful in the beginning. I've had plenty of women tell me, oh, when I met him, he was so nice. He was a man of God, and he beat me every which way but Tuesday when I hooked up with this joker. Mm -hmm. He was mean, he was nasty, and he was awful, okay? Because, see, there's something going on. There's, there's some communication happening beneath the surface. You understand what I'm saying? That causes you to be attracted, okay, or hooked up with folks, all right, that's going to allow you to um, meet the terms of that contract, that agreement with that you have with yourself. See, there's a lot of stuff going on out here. We can't see with these. Uh -huh. It's going on at a, at a whole nother spiritual level. Trust and believe. Because if you look back over your relationships, you'll see the consistency. Well, yeah, John and Fred, they did that a little bit of light. And then Ted, that didn't work out either. See, you, you'll see something. It, it's, it's all there if you know what you're looking for, the code. It's, it's, you can see the matrix, okay? Um, let's keep it moving. So, a lot of you play the victim role. Those, those the, the fruits, definitely, of should, I can't, I must, okay, I have to, will cause you to be the victim, it will cause you to be the serious victim. victim. Now, when we think about a victim, that means that you're in a position of being hopeless, and helpless, okay? And whenever you're the victim, you definitely need an oppressor. And the victim is notorious for, because when you're a victim, you feel like th there's no way out, okay? You, you feel like you're stuck, all right? And you feel like almost you, like you must be oppressed. All right. So you're going to have somebody that's going to fill in that role. OK, that's going to be the predator type mindset to make sure that they um, victimize you. All right. So then again. Now, this is the devil. This is the devil. What's up, Pink Secrets? Am I frozen again? If I am, this is just the devil. Somebody tell me, am I frozen? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Am I frozen? Because over here, I look cool. I look straight. Am I frozen? Okay, cool. Yes, you were. I hear you. you. Always got the message that whatever you was doing, is it frozen again? I don't know. I'm just going to keep going. Um, you just got the message that what you was doing wasn't good enough. You got the message that you had to have the best of this. You had to have the best of that. All right. And actually, the expectations were extremely unrealistic. They were very unrealistic. But how did you know that as a child, that the expectations weren't realistic? So you tried to meet those unrealistic expectations, okay, that were forced upon you when somebody said you should do this and you must do that. So now as an adult, guess what? You run yourself ragged, all right? So you, when you get into a relationship, you're going to have some oppressive, slave-driving guy trying to tell you how what you're doing isn't good enough, how you're not measuring up. And instead of telling him to go fly a kite, okay, and go jump out a window or something, then you say, well, you know what? I must, something must be wrong with me. And so then you jump on yourself, okay? You beat up on yourself again. And you say, well, I'm not measuring up. But like we talked about, we have these contracts. We have these agreements within ourselves to say, I got to hook up with somebody like this. I got to hook up with somebody that's going to play that parental role or that authoritative uh role in my life to drive me until I just halfway just lose my mind. Okay. So we, we looked at all the different fruits of I should, and I can't, and I have to, and I must. So my question to you is, are you doing this? Now I know, I know women, you're, you're notorious for being very critical, you know, um, on yourselves. And that whole thing of not having the love that you need to make you say, Hey, I know who I am. I'm comfortable with that. I love myself unconditionally. No, it, it's, it's good in theory, but you don't have that. 
Okay, so are, are you playing the victim? Are you, um, and I know the victim, that don't sound sexy because nobody who wants to admit I feel like I'm the victim, but I mean, ain't nobody here but us, so you can be honest. Um, are you highly critical of yourself? Do you have these unrealistic expectations of yourself? of this wrong programming, of this seed that has been planted inside you? Do you have that? Do you do that? Okay. Um, and are you worrying yourself sick? Are you worrying yourself to death? Okay. And you're always thinking about what's going to go wrong. You're always fearful that this thing is not going to work out. What's up, Tina? You know, I saw you come in the room, right? I don't even think you've ever been on my scope. If you have, I ain't seen you. Well, welcome, 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 welcome. Um, so if you've done any of these, if you've done any of them, you know what I need you to do? Now, this ain't for everybody. Let me say that. This ain't for everybody. But if it's you, my purpose is not to please others. Oh, praise the Lord. But if it's you I'm talking to, and if you ready, if you right, you right for the pick. And the Holy Ghost has said, listen, Reverend, you, it's your turn right now. I want you to get at me. I want you to hit me up. OK, and guess what? It's on me. 30 minutes. You and I, we're going to chop it up. We're going to talk about it. We're going to get to the source. We're going to find out why you're dealing with this. Why? OK, you know, just a homie and a home just talking. So but once we do that, once we figure it out, guess what we're going to do? We're going to put you on a program. We're going to get you straight. Yeah, we're going to get you straight. Now, I, I understand this ain't for everybody. Some of y'all still cooking. Some of y'all still peeking around the corner. Eh, I don't know. I'm thinking, you know, some of y'all don't even know that you're crazy. Y'all just, God bless your heart. You don't even know you nuts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In love, though. He's a modern day miracle worker. Well, see, Keisha, see, I praise the Lord, Remy. Uh, I appreciate you saying that about me. I really do. Homie and home at, yes, homie and home at, we, that's what we're going to do, we're going to chop it up, but that's what we're going to do, so like I said, it's not for every, everybody's not ready at the same time, but if it's you, okay, you don't have to look to the right, you don't have to look to the left, the Holy Spirit is telling you, okay, because I believe in the Holy Spirit, and I believe the Holy Spirit talks to whomever he's talking to, all right, but at the same time, you got to answer the call, you know, you got to answer the call, all right, because sometimes it's just about timing, but anyway, if it's you, get at me. Oh, how to get at me? That's a good question that nobody asked. All right, uh, but I heard it in the Holy Ghost. All right, ChristopherReed.org. That's how you get at your boy. Doc is that dude, challenging and good at what he do. Well, thank you, Tina. God bless you. I appreciate that endorsement and all the other endorsements out here. Because listen, we got to go into 2017, ladies, okay? We got to go into it ready to love us. I mean, at the end of the day, it always gets back to loving yourself. I don't care where you start, doormat, CEO, guarded, it doesn't matter. Those are just, you know, locations of uh, bad programming, you know, being functionally dysfunctional. And that's okay. Mostly everybody is. But at the same time, it is a love deficiency. Now, here's the thing. We talk about love. You know, it seems like it's easy to love yourself, but it, if, if it was, well, how come everybody ain't doing it? I'm talking about men, too. Men, men have this self-loathing thing that we do, you know, because we compare ourselves. You know, we're big on the comparison. Who's got this and who's got that, right? Happy New Year's, okay? And, 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 and men have a lot of insecurities. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm let you see behind the curtain, ladies. Men have a lot of insecurities. Now, they may not tell you about them because that's just don't come across manly. Right. But my guys, we have a lot of insecurities. All right. It's OK. It's all right, Miss Pink Secrets. You can catch one of the three or two other versions also if it recorded. I don't even know if it recorded. Periscope's tripping right now. It's all right. All right. So, like I said, everybody's dealing with this. Everybody's dealing with this self-loathing thing. Um, falling in love with yourself after Doc helps you is better than the best romantic relationship. See, you know, now Keisha, see, Keisha is really, she's, she's a, a great prototype because she's at a place in the process, um, where she really has discovered that self-love for real, for real. Like to the point where guys are trying to get at you and it's almost like a distraction with, of you loving yourself. And it's real, you know, and I, I, and you know, Keisha, you said you've tried to share this with some of your friends and people around you and they just looking at you like, what? 
what what are you talking about? You know, like they've just seen like a ghost or something. Yes. Let's talk about that. What is that? I don't know what that is. How many people stay single to really fall in love with yourself? Not many. No. Because we don't we don't talk about that. Mm -hmm. We tell ourselves we love ourselves, ladies. We don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Trust me, it's like a drug. Okay, don't know what it is. Trust me, it's like a drug. Yeah. And see, I, I think some people feel like the whole I love myself thing is uh, it's a downgrade. No, I want a man, but tell me to love myself because then that's kind of like, I couldn't get the car, but I could get what's behind curtain number two, a year supply of ramen noodles and God bless you. And it's like, that ain't what I want. I want a man. But see, why do you want a man? Oh, come on, somebody. Let's get to the heart of the matter. Why do you want a man? What role is he going to fulfill in your life just to have a man on your arm? Why? What, what emotional need, what void is having that man, men and insecurities? Oh, you like that? Men and insecurities? You enjoy that, huh? Okay, we can chop it up on that. You know, maybe do a whole section on it. Um, but that guy for you, because here's the thing, ladies. A lot of you will stay with a jacked up dude. You'll stay with a horrible guy just to say you got a man. Just to say you're not by yourself. Once you fall in love with yourself. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. What does he represent to you? Because he's not representing all things amazing. Now, I know y'all can fantasize and y'all can, you know, fairy tales and pixie dust and, you know, Prince Charming and all that. But that's what I'm saying. If you were the guy that's so jacked up, what is he representing to you? Just a companionship? But he's rep security. Yeah. But you're, you're, you're for some for those who feel like it's security. If he's messing around and he's not treating you well, where is the sense of security? Making your ex jealous. That's funny. Um, false security. Thank you. So when we start to the only point I'm making here is when we pull back the layers. And really start to say, what do I have here? And is it possible that what I have, I can give to myself? I mean, the thing that I'm really looking for. So when I get out here and I'm in a healthy place, I'm in a whole place. Now, as I enter into these discussions, relationships, and I'll tell you something else that happens. Y'all ain't going to believe it. But guys start chasing you like it ain't nothing. And I'm talking about quality Dudes, see y'all ain't gonna believe me. Y'all, y'all not gonna believe me. Y'all gonna believe. Y'all gonna say, you know what you gonna say? Where they at? That's what you always say. You gonna say where they at then? Where they at? Where you at? No, when I when I, when, I, when I say where you at, here's what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Diamond Brown. When I say where you at, I'm talking about the real you. The real you. See, the thing that you want, you have not become. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. Oh my God, he's so right. They find you. I got too many. Say it again, Keisha. Say it again. What's up, Minister McNeil? I'm freezing. You know, Diamond, I don't know if it's, I don't know if I'm freezing to everybody, but sometimes maybe you got to log off and log, I don't know. Periscope is awful. It is just awful. What's up, Minister McNeil? I seen the right Reverend McNeil. If any of y'all have seen, um, I don't know if he's still on here. But the uh, the thing I did, well, when I was on the Lexi show, a guy was with me, uh, Chris McNeil. That's who just came on the scope. You know, too many men. Uh, I may get him to join me in the scope and we just kind of go back forth and he talked. There he is. Yes. That right there, that gentleman right there is the young man that was on uh, the Lexi show with me. There's so many of you saw and you said, oh, he was so transparent. Oh, he was it, it was it was it was it was a healing. He was so transparent and open and vulnerable. Yes, they enjoyed you, Reverend. I know you're awful, but they didn't know that. So that's okay. <laughs> when you love yourself, there's a confidence that exudes, that exuded that's really attractive to men. Uh-huh. Yes, yes, yes. No, Elder McNeil is a wonderful young man. Wonderful young man. Yes, it is. It is. But see, you can't fake that confidence. See, a lot of people out here trying to fake it. They trying to act 
Like, here's, here's how I can tell when I'm with a client and they ain't got it yet. They keep asking me, when am I going to be there? When I'm going to do this? When, when is this going to happen? When are the guys going to... They asking me all these questions about the men and, you know, when they're going to be done. I know it's not real. They're still focusing on the guys. They're still focusing on getting this thing. They're not focusing on themselves. And why is that a hard sell? I don't know. Because it's your fears. It's all that stuff that you got to deal with that you don't want to deal with. And but like I said... Earlier, men are just as insecure, you know, so why not do the work? You know, because everyone will say you change and you're happy. But see, Keish, that's something you can't. You can't tell anybody that they have to experience that in order for them to get in a place to experience it. They really have to be sick and tired of being sick and tired, because until then, it's just all head stuff. It's all like, oh, I want what she has or I want that, too. But then when you tell them like the rich young ruler, well, Reverend, listen, you got to get rid of everything that you got. Oh, come on now. You have to empty yourself of self, of all that foolishness that you got in you. All the stuff that you picked up, I didn't put in you. You got it from here and you got it from there and it has corrupted you, Reverend. Once you were empty, now we can fill you back up with the real stuff. Well, now you've caused a problem. Because I don't like that. I wanted you to say what I wanted to hear in the way that I wanted to hear it. Well, I'm sorry. And so you go away sad because why did you go away sad, the rich young ruler? Was it because you didn't get what you want? Is it because he didn't tell you the way that you wanted to hear it? What were you sad about? You still got your money. What's the problem? Mm hmm. That's a good one to think on. Well, the thing about it is he just wasn't really willing to give up. You know, I know a lot of people talk that scripture for a lot of different purposes, but I'm talking emotional healing. I'm talking about being delivered. All right. I'm talking about no longer being in bondage. And see, we don't talk about this. There's just a lot of things we don't we don't deal with a lot of real heart of the matter issues. We don't. It's not just the men. You attract good people and friends. Hello. I mean, but like I said, Keish, you can't, you're just a voice crying out here in the wilderness, you know. But my, my job is just to be out here and on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. And when a person is ready, because I know everybody's not ready at the same time. Life hasn't got you there yet. Okay, but once life gets you there, trust me, there'll be no no mistaking. Good people, really good people, yes. Now, Keish, you, you just experienced a situation where folks was just loving on you like, I mean, gosh. I mean, they were of the other, they were our Caucasian brothers and sisters, and you would think that y'all grew up together. Mm -hmm. But see, when you, that real you comes out, the, the, the you start taking the layers off. You know, like, you know, in the garden where they had to put the fig leaves on them because it was covering up. Once you stop covering up, once you stop being ashamed of who you really are, and once you can live that in boldness, uh, they do wonders for you. They treat you like family. I know. And see, that's what people don't understand. The blessing of being the real you and loving you unconditionally. Forget him. Forget her. Forget, you know, loving you. Giving yourself what you need. You're not going it, to. It's going to be so many blessings. First of all, just having you. Having that love affair with yourself is going to be. Reverend, why don't you go ahead and accept the calling to preach? Because I'm not a preacher. <laughs> That's what you do, Reverend. I'm not accepting nothing. I'm, you know what this is, preacher? This is a relationship church. That's what it is. I let you get up there in the pulpit and, you know, you do, <laughs> and you can sing and, you know, you, you do all that. I, you know, I don't do all that. Stop pretending. Well, I'm not necessarily pretending. <laughs> this is just the way McNeil and I have always talked. We've done this for years. It's a little Richard Pryor thrown in there. I didn't know the boy had asthma. <laughs> Thought the bubbles was from the spirit. <laughs> oh my God. 
Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes. I won't tell them. We can quote some of those lines word for word because it was funny. <laughs> oh, my God. Inside joke. Inside joke. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. Before uh, Elder Pastor Christopher McNeil started saying I should accept callings and foolishness. Um, <laughs> yeah, we got to, you know what? We got to do some more videos or something, man, because it's that, that yin and yang thing. Yes, praise the Lord. Um, we have videos out there. However, I'm definitely not going to tell you how to find them. All right, praise the Lord. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, oh, well, we got so much more. There's, there's a whole nother life that y'all know nothing about. For those who just know Doc Reed, it's a whole nother yeah. Yeah. I, I used to be in a singing group called Christopher and, and with McNeil and um, I guess we're lifelong men, men, members. There's another member, another Christopher. I love you, man. Appreciate you, Doc. You're amazing, too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So at some point, it should all be revealed in time. I believe Minister DeBarge preached that some time back. It should all be revealed in time. So... Yes, I don't know. We were all over the place. And I know Doc Reed. <laughs> Doc, yes, yeah, that's funny, Reverend. Um, Reverend, were you gone now? <laughs> Stop messing up my scope. You just crashing in, just saying random stuff now. Reverend, bye. Beat it. Night, night. Don't, don't you tell it. Now, I'm going to tell you who sings. That Reverend right there, Christopher... Rosendo McNeil sings his face off. Yes, yeah, sing a few bars, Mac. You'll start your own scope. Let me say this. Anything that I do or have done, um, I owe to my big brother, Noomsi McNeil, and his wonderful tutelage over the years. <laughs> nope, it's definitely not going to happen. Mm -mm. Nope, Doc Reed is not doing any of that foolish. But I will tell you this. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I'm not saying a word. Nope. Reverend, I was going to tell them where they can find, where they could find some of the, um, yeah, but I'm not going to do it. Nope. Mm -mm. Well, I might as well just go on and get free. All right. Night, night. <laughs> Uh, let it go. I'm going to hound him in person. No, you're not. Um, go. If you want to see Minister McNeil do his thing, look up Tired. Yes, look up Tired. Uh, just put in the official, what is it, Reverend? The official video, Christopher, official video, Tired or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's about all I got for you. That, that's about it. Yeah, we yeah, tired by Christopher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got about nine lives. Mm-hmm. So that's about all I'm definitely gonna give you on that. It was a good video. Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad you enjoyed that. See? You've seen it. You've seen it. So back to the subject at hand. Getting free. <laughs> Directed by Christopher Sacristato Reed and written by uh, Christopher Elikio McNeil. Yes, so right back at you. All right, so listen, Mac, maybe one day we can, can do Kim Kim 18, what's up? Maybe one day we could do a, um, a, a video about... Um, you know, the men stuff, the insecurities. Because they loved your transparency on the Lexi show when we did that like 20 years ago. And, you know, you were very transparent. And in a, at a totally different place in your life at that time, I mean, a lot. Let me just say this, ladies. If you saw that, a lot has changed for the better, you know. And um, 
but it, it it's it was a dope interview and we could like do part two. That's how I started following you. Oh, okay. So that's how you started following. Okay, cool. You never heard a guy admit ever. Oh, hi, Doc. Hey, what's up, Georgia Peach, too? Yeah. So, okay. That'd be great. Yeah, do it. That's how I found you, Doc, on the video. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, Mac. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of you saw that video. And that is how a lot of you found me. That was your first glimpse uh, of me, you know, that video that, uh, or that interview that I did with Mac and Lexi. And, um, you know, the, the, the feedback was just, it was very transparent. Um, uh, you enjoyed the information I shared. You enjoyed McNeil's transparency and, you know, Lex is just Lex, you know, she's just amazing all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. So Mac is also now if you like that, he's also one of the main guys and he's the VIP of the why he married her instead of you video too. Um also uh his level of transparency in that video uh as well. If you haven't seen that, it's on my website. You can download download it, you can buy it. Um but yeah. And so I think one of the things that a lot of women found oh, reconciliation. Oh, see, and that's a whole nother story. Yeah, that would be dope. <laughs> that would be so dope. Um, but one of the reasons I believe that you found that video so good or the interview is because y'all just not used to guys being that open. Um, I saw him in that video, too. He kept it real. Yeah. And so, but I, I think that guys, guys are willing to be open. And because Max says something in that video, he says, would you say, can I trust you with, what did you say? Can I trust you with me or can I trust you with something? It's almost like, can I trust you with my vulnerability? And can I trust you with that part of my, I would just say it this way. It's saying how you said it, but can I trust you with my little boy? You know, because. Ladies, you you want your little girl to come out. Can I trust you with my vulnerability? Yeah. I thought men didn't feel till I saw that video interview with Lexi. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Mac, you were the apostle. You were the John the Baptist of vulnerability. Uh, will you use it against me? Or will you use it against me? Yeah. See, everybody wants their little boy and little girl to be able to come out and play. You know, but we're so wounded. We're so scarred that... Um, it's it's I'm scared to be hurt again. So everybody feels like they got to have everything slated in their favor, all the security, um, you know, all the control so that they don't get caught out here. Mines won't go away. What 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 won't go away, Keish? The guys. Because I know right now you you just got them coming from everywhere. Oh, your little girl. Yes. Now, you got to be careful now because your little girl can get out of here. <laughs> Freedom can get good to her. And you got to real like nothing. If you don't come on back here now, <laughs> you can let your little boy get out there and you be out here. Yes. Well, I mean, because you think about it, if your little boy or little girl, you know, that most vulnerable part of you has been locked up in the basement somewhere. And then you start working on yourself and let them know it's safe out here. Well, pff, they try to make up for lost time. Mm hmm. You got to be careful now. <laughs> you got to be careful because it can get away from you. And, you know, that could be a good thing. You're free and, you know, ah, but you it's like experiencing life for the first time. And it's it can be it can be a lot. So you, you, you it's, it's, it's a new you. She's kicking it with the grown woman close by. Yeah, I, I like the analogy I gave you. You know, you got to be like the Secret Service. You don't have to be seen. You just got to be in the vicinity. So if it pop off, you know, you OK, listen, get your little hot tail over here. Mm hmm. Yep. Just in case it get crazy out in these streets. Just in case. There's so many things. I mean, Mac and I, we would always talk about, you know, as well as, you know, third guy that was in our group. But we would always talk about the heart of the matter. You know, that's where we live. Um we didn't have a lot of we we didn't enjoy a lot of very surface conversations um 
in our own right, we we were all, all I think it's because we we were comfortable going there emotionally and talking about likes, dislikes, and all that kind of stuff. We didn't feel like we had to grunt and scratch all the time, you know, and spit and you know do man stuff. Or you know, it was do some of that, but I don't have to, you know all the time. You know, I can just talk, have a regular conversation, you know. But and then it's not to say the guys who you know scratch and spit and grunt, you know, it's like something's wrong with them. But at the same time, a lot of guys just haven't had a ex- lot of, you know, experience being vulnerable. I mean, you you were raised with, you got to be this way. We talk, Like we talked about the shoulds. You, you, you must, if you're a man or when you're a boy, you, you got to do this. You have to. You can't be weak. See, I can't. Mm-hmm. You must be strong. And that is true. You, you, I mean, you're going to be taking care of a family and all that. But some of those messages about you can't be weak and you got to be strong got translated into you can't be vulnerable at any time. Even when you want to be vulnerable, when you, you feel like you need to cry or whatever, it's like you can't do it. Now, sometimes life will beat you down so hard that you like you ain't got no option. You just you gonna break down. OK, but then at the same time, you feel like a failure. I shouldn't have to do this. Why am I doing this? And you can't continue to love yourself unconditionally and accept yourself flaws and all. You know, I thought about something recently, I, you know, because I was telling myself, like, I love myself, and, like strengths and weaknesses. And that's why you got to make sure the right person is on the receiving end of that truth. Amen, preacher. Um I love my strengths and my weaknesses. And the reason it's wonderful to love your weaknesses is because it gives you an opportunity to allow abundance to come into your life. Your strengths allow abundance to go out because you can help. But our weaknesses, you ain't going to be strong with everything now. Just get over yourself. You're just not. You're not wired that way. Every joint supplies, Reverend. You know, bear you one another's, you know what I'm saying? How are you going to do that if you you super strong at everything? You know, so to say these are my weaknesses, it gives me an opportunity to allow somebody else to bless me. Or like I said, somebody to cover me in that way. Shut up, Reverend. (laughs) So even as my own journey, because I got to drink my own Kool-Aid, you know, I got to love myself, too. You know, if I'm doc and telling, you know, so I practice the same stuff I tell everybody else. There is so much power in that. And I'm telling you, the love yourself piece for those of you who don't know nothing about it, it's amazing. You never, you're never too old. You're never too young to have a serious love affair with yourself. Okay, because a lot of people are going to get married expecting that spouse to fill a void that that spouse is not going to fill. Not, not if it's something you should be feeling, because you hope that they did their stuff too and they like themselves or love themselves. Because if not, you oof. That's why I'd be marriages, you know, they couldn't make it past the two year mark. Why? Because we, 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 we don't like ourselves. And then I'm expecting you to do something that's not realistic. Well, I'm going to put all that burden on you. And now I want you to be something with and for me and to me. You can't do that. No, you can't. You can't help me love me. It just doesn't, you know. So, um, these are the, these are some of the other messages that I believe we need to hear in Christendom. Love you as I love myself. Yes. But see, we miss that. I think we we love we get the love you part. We we miss the love myself part. We said love is, you know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And the we cool on the love your neighbor. But we don't really know or the love yourself is perceived as selfishness. And no, it doesn't have to be a, you know, a narcissist. It just means really love yourself. And we really, it just, that just glosses over us. Yeah, love yourself. Okay, yeah, whatever. And we really don't know what it means. So anyway, but hey, we're going to figure it out. And we're going to find out what loving yourself means. Too busy, flaunting, yeah, for others. Yeah, we, we're too other focused. I'm mean, Just as a society, we're just too, we care too much what people think. We care too much what people are doing. We care too much what people are driving, what they wearing, how they living, how they balling. A lot of them fronting. A lot of them ain't living like that. You know, I mean, social media, when social media can allow you to take 100 pictures and pick the best one, how is that real? You know, if it, it, 
social media is the, s- the snapshot of perfection. You know, you got to get just the right. No, nah, no. Nah, okay, delete that. Take that one again. Oh, I, ain't, I ain't feeling that one either. Okay, just this time, just get it from looking down. Uh, Yeah, post that one. Post that one. And so that when that's all you see, <laughs> everyone falling on loud, happily booed up. They ain't doing that. And see, that's why sometimes it's like, you know what? That ain't no different than watching, you know, a Walt Disney movie, you know, with Mickey Mouse. It's, it's just not real. Now, if you watching it, proverbial MySpace poses, right, right. Or those nightclub poses, you know. <laughs> Whatever it is, right, right. Uh, be living in separate rooms, but happy online. Yeah, because other focus. So how about 2017? We just love it. We just say, hey, you know what? Loving ourselves, flaws and all. It is what it is. And I guarantee you, when you start that journey, life gets fun. Uh, what you laughing at, Tina? I know you're still here. You've been over there all silent. Tina's an amazing individual. That's all I'll say about that. I should, Tina. You know what I'm about to do? Tina, let me say this. Tina's, oh, this is what I need y'all to do. Okay, Tina has a birthday coming up. I'm about to make her feel very uncomfortable. I don't care. She can't beat me. So, because I'm all the way over here. So, Tina has a birthday coming up January 11th. Um... I want y'all to tell, uh, right now, I want y'all, and I'm doing this for a reason. It's not her birthday yet, but I just want you to say happy pre-birthday, Tina, because I just need her to have a special moment, okay? So y'all do that for me. Tell Tina happy pre-birthday. It's January 11th, okay? And I'm not going to say anything or move forward until this happens. So, yep. Wait for the happy birthdays. Come on, let's go. Thank you. Come on, let's go. Say happy birthday, Tina. Happy birthday, Tina. I need that Tina in there. This is very, come on, be obedient to the Holy Spirit right now. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all don't even know what you're doing right now. It's a, it's amazing. Tina, I need you to look at that now, Reverend. Let's take a snapshot. Uh-huh. That's for you. This is the beginning. It's all about you. You can't put it on nobody else, you know, because Tina, like a lot of you, thank you, Elder Pastor Reverend McNeil, Tina, like a lot of you, gives so much to everybody else. Doesn't ask for anything. And I'm not going to go into what that is, but it's a lot. And she's an amazing individual like so many of you and um but we can not focus on ourselves this is so very special thank you i screenshot it yes and it's going to go in the love journal and i want the rest of you this year i want you to start a love journal i was you know the love you you know love university love you um yeah start a love journal on how you're loving yourself this year And chronicle it. And, you know, and and as you go along that journey, how that makes you feel. Yes. So what is today? Today is the fifth. Touch my heart. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Tina, this is just the beginning. Love journal. Yes. Love journal is everything that you put in it. That's all about focusing on you. Tina, the giver. No, seriously, Mac, you have no idea. (laughs) You have no idea, homie. For real, for real. Like you really have no idea. That's all I can tell you, Reverend. That's all I can say. Um, yeah. So the love journal, everything that you do for you, you put it in like you're thinking about, okay, what is it I can do? Not for, you know, because see, some of y'all, y'all say I'm going to do it for me, but somebody else benefits. No, for you, you know, it's for you. And, and, and if it's really for you and it's things that you enjoy, that's also another component that you have to enjoy it. Um, it has to put a smile on your face. It has to make your little girl, or you know, leap. Um, then it's going to fill that love tank, um, that those oxytocin levels are going to go up. All right. And, um, 
once you start to make a lifestyle of that, mm -hmm, Diamond Brown, you're so very welcome. Once you start to make a lifestyle of that, you'll realize that I can tell she's a giver. Oh, Reverend, and she got the gift. Oh, she got it now. <laughs> oh, she got the gift. Um, so, um, once you start to do this, have a lifestyle of giving and loving yourself, you, 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 you stop having these, these moments of just highs, but then you have these deep lows. You, you start to level out and you're up here. Yeah.